Now I've had a lot of questions recently and especially on some of my older videos and it's in regards to the adjustable antennas that I uh, make and use over on the test bench and I prefer to do this over software. I mean software is only as good as the database that it uses. I mean uh, if the software doesn't have the information in its database um, you know about that particular antenna then it's not really all that useful and uh, the really good software with an extensive database is extremely expensive I mean it's just priced well out of the uh, hobby market they cost thousands and thousands of pounds but uh, another reason why I make these is because I am a maker uh, deep down and uh, you know that's what I do and I also teach design and technology so making something is uh, you know quite easy for me it's it's what I enjoy so I actually enjoy uh, not just testing these but I enjoy uh, making them and coming up with the uh, problems that uh, you may come up with associated with designing something like this and also for me uh, particularly um, I'm a very practical person so I learn a lot more by doing than I do just from reading I mean I read quite a lot but uh, actually uh, making something even if it fails uh, teaches me uh, so much now this is uh, an antenna here that uh, we've got in front of us now this is uh, probably uh, one of the most misunderstood antennas that there are and you won't find many videos on these explaining it either when it comes to the measurements they kind of gloss over the fact that it's uh, a quarter wavelength measured at 25 millimeters and it's still resonant for 2.4 gigahertz for instance but this is the hertzian dipole and uh, these are uh, little things that I made uh, quite a few years ago now to try and understand this antenna and uh, you can see here it's adjustable this is the ground here I can uh, adjust that I can also adjust it in the middle and also at the end here and I've made various different uh, loading coils and also other things to go along with this so I can come up with uh, any measurement really and test it over on the uh, network analyzer in real time this again is uh, another one but made with uh, thinner brass and you can see again you know it's all adjustable and uh, this antenna you really cannot understand truly understand this antenna unless you've got a good grounding in calculus and this is the antenna that pushed me to uh, expand my uh, you know my uh, subject knowledge in the area of calculus I mean I'm still not good by uh, no means and it's an ongoing thing with me uh, but uh, yeah this antenna showed me that you really truly cannot understand the electromagnetic spectrum unless you understand calculus now this is another adjustable uh, antenna that I came up with and it's a uh, monopole and this one I was exploring um, the diameter of tubing how that affects the uh, wavelength of uh, the monopole so you can see here we've got some quite thick tubing really and uh, it's a really really simple design is the monopole but I can screw this up and down to adjust its length and see how that affects the uh, wavelength over on the network analyzer again in real time which is uh, really really nice and uh, you know how the diameter affects the uh, wavelength and indeed the diameter of the tubing really does uh, affect the wavelength and you can um, get uh, you know a monopole made out of this kind of diameter tubing and instead of being uh, 31.5 millimeters for 2.4 gigahertz being a quarter wave you can reduce that down to something like 30 millimeters so really really interesting and uh, again it's uh, something that to truly understand you need calculus for but making something like this I learned uh, a hell of a lot about the diameter of uh, driven elements and uh, how they affect the wavelength and I haven't found uh, you know a, an affordable program that can really show you that on a computer and again I don't find it as much fun just uh, you know building one of these in software and then uh, emulating its uh, output um, I don't find that as interesting as making something and then testing it directly on the network analyzer and here we've got a uh, test jig for a Vivaldi antenna and I built this a few years ago again when I was trying to 
understand those and uh, again this is a simple uh, dipole kind of a uh, setup it's related to the uh, slot antenna family and I've got a really nice slot antenna and I've had it for quite a while that I haven't showed you yet I think I'll have to do a video on that one but uh, it's really nice but this is it belongs to the same family and we've got the feed here and it's roughly set in the middle and uh, measurement here along the bottom and uh, basically you can feed these at uh, takes a while to wind this down but uh, basically you can feed it uh, a quarter wavelength in half wavelength in or three quarters of a wavelength in and I was doing that to see how that would affect uh, the VSWR of this antenna and uh, you know the relation because it's a quite a wide band antenna and I was looking at how that relationship to where you feed it uh, opened up uh, different areas along the bands there where it performed a lot better in a particular area because remember a wide band antenna doesn't perform the same across that wide band um, but yeah this this one was a, a really really good useful tool for me to uh, understand this and pretty simple to make really um, I've just got a screw device here and then I've got the coax attached uh, to the ends here they make contact where you can see where I've tinned along these uh, tracks here and this this works really really well and uh, you know really help me understand the Vivaldi antenna so this is an interesting uh, little uh, jig that I uh, built a couple of years ago and it's basically a uh, Yagi jig and uh, it allows me to adjust different things in real time again look at the output on the network analyzer and come up with measurements that are optimum for a particular frequency I use this a lot when I was coming up for the measurements for the 2.4 gigahertz Yagi and I'm going to be using this again uh, to build an 1800 megahertz uh, Yagi antenna so again uh, what's interesting about this I can adjust everything in real time I can adjust the uh, main driven elements on here I can extend those out or uh, reduce their size I can extend the balance here part of uh, the antenna I can make that longer and see how that affects the uh, wavelength um, I can uh, extend the uh, uh, the back reflector of this out but um, the back reflector doesn't uh, you know it's not so important to the overall build of the Yagi just as long as you've got the reflector bigger than the uh, main driven elements and parasitic elements then really you're good to go but uh, yeah I can adjust the parasitic elements in and out a little bit stiff I haven't used it for a while but yeah I can there we go need a little bit more oil on that one I can adjust them make them bigger or smaller and I can uh, move them around so I can uh, change uh, the distance in the separation of those uh, elements and uh, this was really good at uh, me trying to understand uh, the uh, Yagi antenna because you know there's so many different designs of Yagi antennas there really is and uh, this is a, a really nice design that I settled on and I like and it really did help me build one for uh, 2.4 gigahertz so yes I'll be using this again to build one for 1800 megahertz setting up the distances looking at the output on the network analyzer and then when I'm happy I can just take the measurements of all the elements where they're spaced out how long they are and then make that uh, you know Yagi antenna so a really nice one but uh, this one is a little bit fiddly now this one I did uh, make a video on this at the time and again me trying to understand the uh, cantenna antenna and the relationship of the main driven element and the distance from the uh, back reflector there's a couple of videos on this I think from a few years ago um, I do need to make another one of these because in my uh, cantenna book that I'm writing it's going to be a while before it's finished I've got an entire chapter dedicated to this so I want some nice pictures of it but you can see it still works fine you can see there's a little bit of rust going on there now uh, this is stainless steel but this isn't but uh, yeah I want to uh, tidy this up um, and get rid of this but uh, yeah it uh, still works really well and it really helped me um, down in there maybe you can see I don't know there we go that's a good image I can adjust the uh, size of the driven element in there and then adjust the distance from the back reflector the only thing we can't adjust with this is the diameter of the can but uh, yeah this one again really helped me to understand cantennas 
and finally we've got the newest addition to the uh, adjustable antennas and this is the log periodic antenna and uh, this is a, a three element one that I uh, built three on the top three on the bottom and uh, again all adjustable this operates around uh, 800 megahertz and I can adjust the uh, elements look at the uh, output on the network analyzer and then uh, you know take the measurements and build one um, you know for that particular frequency but the only thing I haven't really figured out yet I've got a few ideas is how to uh, adjust the distance between the the elements um, because I can adjust the elements themselves but really I need some kind of adjustment here in the middle to adjust the distance between the elements but again really really simple if I unscrew one of these all I've got inside there is a uh, M4 nylon screw. These are uh, 14 millimeters long, and uh, I just uh, made the uh, end of these round so they fit in the ends of these tubes. And I've just tapped it out like I tapped out these threads in that video, so we could connect it to the uh, boom there. But uh, they just screw directly in there with the threads, and that means I can alter the length of the elements so really really simple but uh, that's the easiest part the most difficult part as I say is to be able to adjust all this along the uh, boom the distances but again this is the newest one to the bench and I've been using this uh, for the last week or so just you know adjusting the elements and seeing how they uh, change over the frequency and again it's a wideband antenna but uh, just adjusting the elements can make it perform better in a particular part of that wide band of frequency. So if you wanted something for 850 and uh, as standard it was uh, outputting, you know, a really nice, nicely at say uh, 810 for instance, you can adjust the uh, length of these elements and bring it down so it performs a lot better at uh, 850 megahertz. So it gives you options I just as I say I want to figure out a way how to uh, extend that boom in and out as well so we can get some real measurements from this so just a few of the uh, adjustable antenna setups that I've built over the years that have particularly helped me all of these here that you can see in front have really helped me to uh, understand a particular antenna design and uh, yeah I do prefer this uh, over uh, software this is how they used to do things uh, back in the day before uh, computers and computer software became a thing and again as I say I've really enjoyed building them as much as using them um, you know and as that's just the way I learn as well so yeah hopefully uh, you, you enjoyed this uh, little video if you did please give it a thumbs up and uh, again I hope you join me on the next one